Hey everybody, it's Devin Francis, also known as Leonard Meltzner. Welcome to our Funny Jokes podcast, where we never joke. Funny joke. joke. <laughs> uh, you're watching episode 160 of the Adventures in Odyssey podcast. What are we talking about today? I don't know. Who are you? I said I'm Devin, didn't I? No. Oh. Who are you? I'm the one. I'm the one. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. What are we talking about today? I don't know anything anymore. I'm glad we made it like 45 seconds into this episode before complete mental breakdown. We're talking about the new Olivia. It's an episode about needing to revamp yourself, just like how we need to delete this podcast and make a new podcast, because we don't know what we're doing. Uh-huh. What else? Uh, the star part one, because it's Christmas. It was Christmas at some point. Yeah. Um, so, episode 848, The New Olivia, written, of course, by Kathy Buchanan. What happens in The New Olivia, Victoria? In this episode, Olivia is tired of being embarrassed by... You know what I just realized? Existent. When I yeah. said the name of this episode last time, I said the Nouveau Olivia, he which did. is dumb. Obviously, it's Nouvelle. I don't know why I said that. Sorry, go on. In this episode, Olivia is tired of being tired of existing, so she decides to try something else called existing but lying all the time. So she pretends to be British at like a uh, Young thing. Leader Symposium. Yeah, for, like, public speaking and stuff. And then to get a babysitting job, she pretends to be a country gal. And then I can't do any voices because I have a cold and I'm going to sneeze, like, every 10 seconds. Uh-huh. Um, and then she basically gets put in a scenario where... Everyone is in one place at once, and she has to pretend to be British, but she has to pretend to be country, but her mom's there too, so she has to pretend that nothing bad's happening, and it just, it it goes all kinds of willy wonkers, and, um, yeah, but then it works out, because everyone knew she was a liar the whole time, and then... Except the kids, except who were surprisingly offended kids. about it. Yeah, they were really upset, um, her new friends. And then uh, she learned that as soon as she stopped putting on a facade, she went right back to being embarrassing, and the episode ended. Yeah. Yeah, and that is the end of our review of Zoe 101, episode whatever, uh, featuring the introduction of Victoria Justice. I um, like, I like that episode. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Yeah, I, I think about that episode a lot. She had, like, the fake chest on, and she couldn't go swimming, because it, it would have come off. And... Mm-hmm. No, yeah, when I went away to university, the thought of that episode did strike me up. I was like, I could also pretend to be someone else. How interesting, the opportunity to like have a blank slate. I remember there was like this. something I heard once. I'm not but sure. But I thought of it too late. Was. I was like, oh dang, too late now for me to think of some oh well, oopsie. Yeah, I'm not sure what it was. Um, but it was this I think I heard it on an Odyssey related thing, mm-hmm. maybe from Kevin. I don't know. But like there's this guy who pretended to be Scottish or something like that when he went away to school and then oh, yeah. everyone thought he was and then his parents came and visited him and they found out but like he'd used the accent for so long he couldn't not speak yeah. it in anymore so then he just had an, a scottish accent forever forever I yeah thought, i thought about i completely doing, forgot about that i think about that a lot i i thought about doing that with a british accent when i went away to school but the problem is my parents were there for the first couple days and also everyone and also, already knew me um yeah everyone knew you Except for like people, who I, were in your classes, people who yeah. were in my classes wouldn't have known. The it's a good thing I didn't because I found out like after a while of being at school that my roommate was in fact British. So that really would not have worked if I tried to do that. And now I'm about to graduate, so it's way too late for that. Well, 
once you start your master's degree, you have a whole new window of opportunity. That's true. That's true. Okay. I did have the fear that I wouldn't be able to go back to my normal voice, though, so I've never really... That's held me back. So, um... We started the episode off, Olivia's being very embarrassed because she's doing a storytelling event at her school, and it turns out she had toilet paper stuck to her the entire time. And not only does the entire student body just, you know, let this happen and laugh at her with no one telling her, which is the already principal horrible. The pulls vice, her to the side the and vice he laughs in her face. After all of it, like, the type of person who laughs at a kid because they just gave an extended talk in front of their entire, all of their peers with toilet paper stuck to their sleeve and just laughs at them and doesn't tell them until it's over should not work with kids should not be a vice principal. I was like, please tell me this is a dream because this person should not have authority over children. If that's yeah, the way that they treat was, situations. It was mean. And then later when she saw me again, she's like, are you here to laugh at me? He was like, no, not this time. And he also, Bad, is like bad principle. He's also like, oh yeah, you know, we like, we totally oh. picked you after we picked like literally every other person yeah. in the school possible. And she's like, so I'm literally more. your last choice and only there because you need someone there. And he's and just like, like, yes. And I'm like, wow, you're, you really don't like her, do you? You're just, you're mean. Yeah. He did have one quip that was actually very funny, which is when she talked about setting the stage on fire in the production of As You Like It. And he's like, well done, apparently. And I was like, okay, that's that's pretty funny. Um, she And when he's talking about the stuff that she does, he's like, and you're, you're the president of the drama club. And she was rebutting all these things, but she didn't even mention the fact that she stepped down as president of the drama club. Um, also, Maury should have been involved in this conference. I was like, maybe Maury will be running the conference. Maybe he's bugged the hotel rooms of all these participants so he can gather dirt on all these up-and-coming student leaders from other schools, keeping his options open. Maybe he was there and we didn't know about maybe. it. Maybe. Speaking of Maury, they also mentioned Parker for president. And in fairness to Olivia, because she was like, I lost the election. Uh, it was not her fault that she lost the race. Like, no, Maury's, that was Maury's the Maury. one who made Emily president. Everyone's going to be so angry when they find out that Maury's a traitor to literally everyone, including himself, mm -hmm. probably. Probably. Along the line. Trust nobody. Not, Not even, even more. Yourself. Who's that other dog? <laughs> um, we would get multiple mentions of Finneman's Market in this, which was very exciting. Is Joe still kicking? I don't imagine so, like, because June is gone now and he was her uncle and, you know, he never showed up in like life expectancy or He's was mentioned immortal. at all. I think we've actually talked about this before. Like, is Joe Finneman still around? I think we talked about that back hey, when we talked about life expectancy. It means he's not dead. We I mean, probably should have showed up to June's funeral then or been mentioned he was it there. in he was any- He just in the background. Probably should have talked to Connie at some point. No, no, we didn't. Yeah. Um, so there's the lady at the grocery store and she's like, Oh, you should wear some glasses, dear. You look so much more sophisticated. Just like my accent, everyone thinks I'm so smart. And Olivia's like, oh, I'm going to fake an accent. I was like, please let it turn out at the end that the sale the sales lady wasn't, turned out she wasn't a sales lady, she was just shopping, is also not British, and she's also faking her accent, so people think she's smarter. And that I, didn't turn out to be the case, sadly. But That, that, that lady, I was just like, leave this young girl. I was like, don't, don't talk to this lady you don't know. Stop yeah. it. She did it anyway. Yeah, she's like, oh, yeah, Olivia, be British. I'm going like, to take life advice from a stranger I just met, so I'm going to be British now. Uh-huh. So she does that for a while, and she isn't she isn't the worst at it, but she's I, not It's she's not great at it. I was surprised by how good she is, good in quotation marks, because I thought it would be horrible. Worse. But it actually it had to be passable to young terrible. children, at least. But yeah. then she's like, oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go babysit. Apples, apples, apples. Yeah, I was just like, oh, no. And when she started talking, I was like, no, don't cry your accent, Olivia. Oh. Like, 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 that lady already heard her talk. Uh -huh. And she didn't have, she very clearly <laughs> did not have an accent. I was just like, well, you can't. And she then never she wondered why her mom, like, she clearly had at least met Ava previously. Yeah. And. And then. Yeah. Her mom's like, I just want you to express your individuality. And we're just like, yeah, plus everyone's doing it. 
That was a funny line. I like that. Um, so yeah. I thought she'd call her out for that, but she didn't. <laughs> Olivia gets real confused. And I was like, you know, Olivia probably could stumble upon some accent that's like jumbly between muddled Oxford and Deep South, because apparently the American Southern accent is closer to what the British accent was in like the 1700s. Um, then the modern British, British accent is similar to See, the I thought British she was going to do because, what I did a lot when I first started learning how to talk in a uh -huh. semi-coherent British accent mm -hmm. when I was younger. And yeah, she's going to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was going to um, get muddled between accents when she was mm -hmm. talking to people, and she was going to use uh, the wrong where, one. Where exactly are you from? Your, your accent's a little muddled. Yeah, the, your, so is your tan. <laughs> what was that from? It's my favorite remember. line from Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, right. Um, but... I thought she was actually going to talk in, like, a British accent to her mom or to, like, the lady she was babysitting for or a country accent mm -hmm. to, like, her friends. Yeah. But, like, that never happened. Yeah. And she was able to, like, flip between them like this. And I was thinking, like, okay, only a voice actor could do that or someone who's had, like, a long time of practice. But, yeah. Because um, it's not easy to learn how to talk in an accent unless you're deaf. Not to jump into it without not to at least having a moment to like get your, get your head into it. Yeah. Um, it's not easy unless you know 100% what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Or what you're saying happens to start with like like a schema phrase, that you, like a key phrase yeah. that you use. Do you remember what my key phrase was when I was learning how to... It was oh. Harry. It was saying Harry in a British accent because I was reading the Harry Potter books. Because um, I'm, I'm terrible. Da, 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 which would be drastically different depending on which British accent you're going with. I was trying to imitate uh, the British accent that I heard in the videos of the people who did the Demix Time videos. Because they, I knew you were going to yeah, say. Because I was watching those a lot at the same time yes, that were. I was reading Harry Potter and those guys were British. Um, so, yeah. yeah, as I was saying with the accents, there's like this weird divergence where like North America, like this like Southern, like Alabama accent and the modern British accent that the, the American one is actually closer to like 1700s British like, than the modern like one New is. New Orleans kind of? No, well, New Orleans is, is pretty different than the rest of the Deep South. My brain's like um, classy and New Orleans. Uh -huh. No, when you're just thinking of like vampires. when you're just thinking of like like a deep South accent, like did you country. ever watch an interview with a vampire? I have not. No. Oh um, my gosh! I know what we're gonna watch later. Uh, yeah, the rest of Ducktail season one with Mop. Yeah, and then after no, that, no, no, interview with the vampire. No, and Rice, I will not give in. No, don't you want to see? No, nope, um, I don't care. What's this? Um, let me finish my point, Victoria. To it's Tom been Cruise shush, vampire. shush. This has nothing to do with this, Victoria. Um, for some reason, Britain's accents evolved faster after the two broke apart, and the accents. Of the people who moved we from don't Britain want to sound like the Americans. to America, evolved slower, and so we end up with it's. And it's funny because the Deep South accent is, con you know, it has a connotation of like uneducated hick kind of thing, and people have the connotation that British accents are like refined and intelligent, but in reality, that you know they're both equally British, but like. The Deep Southern accent is more what Shakespeare would have sounded like than what British people sound like now. Oh, what light? What, what light? What, what light through your What nose. light through yonder window breaks? It's the east and Juliet is the sun. Yeah, is more accurate than a modern British accent to read those lines. Wow, I'm learning so that's much. Why I said, that's why I want to get this point across, because that's a thing to think about. Um... My my brain box is so full of information yeah. that my head hurts. I also love when we found out Olivia wasn't trying to do the southern accent to like endear the lady to her. It's I just, thought the lady she, was going to be insulted. So did I. Oh, I thought she was going to be. I was thinking any normal person would have been insulted. <laughs> yeah, I think she was, I was making this fun of her. One very nice, two very uh -huh. gracious. Mm -hmm. Very Especially gracious. Especially that she didn't lose the job, uh -huh. and it's implied that Olivia probably won the speaking thing most likely perhaps but 
Maybe so. Like, um, we don't know she did, but she probably did with the way everyone was building it up. But the fact that, like, Olivia didn't do that on purpose, and we find out at the end, she's like, it just came out, and then I couldn't retract it, because then I would seem like a terrible person. I'm like, Ugh. And then we find out all of the adults knew the entire time. I was like, okay, I, I like that, because I couldn't figure Me out too. a way that, like, she could get out of it. Uh -huh. And the fact that, like, if you don't have a certain accent and you try to do that accent in front of someone who has that accent. Yeah, obviously they're they, going to know. They're going to know that you're doing it wrong. Yes. Like immediately. And the fact that they're just like, you were horrible and your expressions were dumb. What were you talking about? It was just, it was very good. It was very realistic. Yes, I, I really liked that. I wouldn't have been pleased if the adults had fell for that and yeah. they didn't. So that was good. I also like how the kids were like, we don't have accents. We're American. Everyone else has accents. I was just like, ah, children. Ugh. Um, I remember the first time I realized that I had an accent and I was just like, oh my gosh. Also, the episode art in this one has a poster for One Way Street, uh, the, the One Direction knockoff that was first mentioned a couple episodes ago. Oh, I thought ago. that was supposed to be like Backstreet Boys. I don't think, I think it's One Direction. I guess it could be a combination. It could be. That kind of makes sense. I suppose. Um, I imagine it's more One Direction. I, um, I... Because you travel one direction on a one-way street. I wasn't big on the last minute of this episode, where all of a sudden Olivia was just like, I'm going to let everyone know oh. about my lesson I learned. And they're just like, wait, no, don't. Yes. Wait, wait. And uh -huh. I was just like, oh, are they going to point out the fact that that's, like, completely unrelated to everything? People might be upset in the audience if they hear that, if she ends up, like, winning or something like that, and they hear that uh -huh. she was, like, lying the entire time she was presenting... And also, they're here to, like, learn about, like, the whole, I don't know, whatever they're speaking about. Okay, but to be fair, as Olivia pointed but... out, like, that is a good, an important part of leadership. Yeah. Is, like, admitting your faults and being able to share with people the learning experiences you've had through your mistakes so that they can learn constructively from you. Yeah, but, like, I understand that, but at the same time, she's presenting on something completely different. And yeah. also, she's probably going to go over her time for her speech. Because it's not planned. So she's practicing, like... So she's just going to, like, get through... Halfway through what lesson she learned. Not even talk about, uh -huh. like, the actual thing she was learning. I was thinking, like, that's a good lesson. Hold off until other people actually do the thing you've been practicing. Yeah, it's I gonna think come off way the better. issue is, if, if she was just doing it, it's like, it's fine, Olivia, that's your choice. But she's presenting for a group project, and she yeah. just kind of, like foisted that on everyone else at the last minute and then contrary being like, to wait desires. no i was just like thank you it like good thing to point out there's a time and there's a place and they're yeah. like oh no we were actually stopping you from going and there's out a substantial stage prize at stake with, too for the rest yeah. of them yeah so. um they're like oh no we actually just wanted to stop you from going out on stage with toilet paper stuck to your shoe or whatever i was like oh, how yeah, does, I forgot. I forgot how does this keep happening how is she not like very aware of just like how does she not know to look i don't know how does that happen great? i've never seen or heard of that happening to anyone i've known before that did happen to me once okay. this past year but i noticed immediately on your sleeve or your shoe on or? my shoe when i was but it was like a public bathroom so I don't well know obviously I yeah is it why UBC? would you wouldn't be wearing a shoe in a non-public bathroom i don't know that'd be terrible but yeah i noticed immediately so yeah I don't know how anyone, like, you watch a movie and just like, oh, I got it stuck in it my dress. It happens all the time in movies. Like, like, who, what alien are you? Um, what planet are you from that this one? I don't even understand. I don't understand. I don't want to know. I don't get it. Yeah, don't, let's just talk about something else. So, it doesn't make any sense. In the video documentary, we hear from Kelly Stables about all the fun that she had with the accents in this episode, which is a lot. And she was just sad that Olivia... Didn't get to do some Brooklyn Rage. Hey, Ava, I'm walking here. And Did she say that? She, those weren't her exact words. I don't remember her exact words, but I enjoyed it personally. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that would have been fun. Um, there's a lady who talks about some vocab differences across the pond. Like lift and elevator and lorry and semi, all that kind of like normal stuff. She tries to do, they're like, can you do an American Southern accent Was for she us? she British? 
She didn't sound British to me is the weird what thing. What accent did she have? She just sounded American, but apparently she was British. Oh, okay. Um, but they're like, can you do an American Southern accent for us? And it was adorable. It was like Rachel McElroy's Aww. Australian accent. It made the camera person crack up from behind the camera. Don't she was worry. like, She was like, howdy, y'all. I'm here now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. It's gonna be jolly. Oh, the, the old jolly good on the bum. It's just like, uh, oh, I'm thanking Jesus for the gift of you. That's so sweet. Like, it's... That's oh the first episode, too. Is it? Yeah. I haven't listened to Wonderful because I don't think I would actually be able to handle uh, it. I know. I feel like it's too it's, much it's for me so, emotionally. It's sweet. I know. They're so cute and... Yeah. It'd be like um, when I watched Paddington, I was just crying the entire movie because it was such, like, a beautiful movie and everyone loved each other so much and I just could not handle it. I need to watch nice things more. <laughs> and so I stop breaking down when I watch movies where everyone's nice. Same. Uh, there's also some Christian music artists that I hadn't heard of before, and he talks about his struggles with low self-esteem and feeling like the need to change oneself and stuff. And then in the web quest, they make a joke about how some people might have panicked upon seeing the title of this episode, the new Olivia, given how many times the Parkers have been recast. And okay, that's that's kind of funny. Yeah, and I also found out the Renee is in Fortnite, so that's her voice thing. actor. Yes. Did they Amy just, Pemberton. So they were talking about this, and they're like, also, Renee's actress in Fortnite in the episode ends. Yeah. How, how no, did no, that they did, enter naturally they did, into the conversation? They do a thing uh, sometimes, I think this was the fourth one, where they're like, they show a picture of that, like the actor when they're young, and then they have some facts about their life, you have to try and figure out who it is. And one of the things is like, they've appeared in such video games as blah, 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 and it lists a couple things before Fortnite was the, the first item. It was like... I still need to know who Quentin played in Darian's Rise. I don't know. Quentin Flynn? Yeah. He was like additional voices in Darian's Rise, but I don't know who he played. I didn't know that. Yeah, because I noticed it, um, I think the second time I ever listened to Darian's Rise. He's in the credits? And Chris was like listing all the actors at the end. And she's like, blah, 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 so and so, Quentin Flynn. And I was like, wait. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. I can't believe you didn't know this earlier. No, I'm, this was like years later. No, 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 I know. But, yeah. So, what do you think about this episode, Victoria? I personally, I thought it was fun mm -hmm. because of the voices. Like, I thought it was enjoyable and I thought it was a very relatable thing. Like, we both just talked about how... Yeah. When we went away to school, we had the exact same thought of like, oh, I could be anybody if I wanted to be. Like, not even for the purpose of like, you know, deceiving anyone, but like, just because like, for oh, fun. This, this sounds like fun. Yeah. To pretend to be British. Yeah, it worked well on Zoe 101, so why not? Except for Lola pretending to be like a guy. So yeah. it's like a way bigger change. Um, so. I have been flip-flopping mm -hmm. for a couple years now, back and forth, on whether I like Olivia or not. I like Olivia. This episode, what do you think? Do you think I'm going to like Olivia or not I like Olivia? You do like Olivia. I did like Olivia in this Good. episode. Yeah, yeah. I actually really liked this episode. I was worried that it would be similar to a change of heart mm -hmm. or something like I that. I definitely had that thought. So yeah. I was kind of worried about listening to it. But I really enjoyed it. Well, because... And um, when she started talking in... Because I was, I was thinking, like, okay, this is already good. But then when she started talking in the country accent, I was just like, no, that's horrible. And I paused. I was like, I love this. <laughs> I, I got, like, really, really into it. I really enjoyed it. Um, and just, I was kind of like, at the end, I was kind of like, oh, and now it's like the lie revealed story and everyone's going to be like, oh, blah, 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 we can't trust you. You need to leave uh -huh. the group. And, and they're just like, oh, we knew because you suck. And I was just like, I love this episode so much. Yeah. So I, I really, really liked it. I thought it was really fun. It was from, really good. From the title of it, I was also worried that it was going to be the very cliche kind of the general sense of like 
oh, someone wants to like change themselves because they don't like how they are or they care too much about what other people think. And so they try to and it doesn't work out and they're like, oh, that was bad. I should be myself. Yeah. Which I suppose, generally speaking, is still the sentiment here. But the... It was more like, this it was more cool. It was more focused than that because yeah. it was specifically about a lot more specific mannerisms than like a general sense of like, oh, I need to like kind of, I need to lie about like the things that I like. Or make myself look different. And I mean, there was a little bit of appearance. But this was mostly specifically focused on, like, voice and perception of culture and stuff. At first, I was like, okay, But, like, her good, personality didn't change. Good idea, she yeah. She liked that. Good idea when she starts to um, do the British thing. I'm like, okay, you've gotten an okay episode. And then she's like, I'm going to continue to do more voices with different people. Yeah. And then her that's, mom's... That's what and got the, Yeah, and then her mom is like, lot. I'm coming to the talk. I'm like, okay. And then the babysitter lady is like, I also will be at the college. I was like, oh. And she's like, also... <laughs> oh, I'm, go she's on. She's like, also, I'm one of the judges for your speech. And then the lady at the grocery store turns out to also be a professor there who also who knows specifically that she was the one who told olivia about the accent Wait, that, thing. Was, that was her at the end yeah the oh one, i didn't realize that yeah she was like oh no it's the lady from the grocery store oh, i didn't realize that and they're like oh good you know her i hope you left a good impression and because she would know not only know that olivia is like american because she heard her talking to it but she also knows she was the one who was like talking about accents and, and we'll know glasses. her glasses are fake yeah. as well yeah um well, Which, I, I mean, admittedly, that. she wouldn't judge her for that because she told yeah, her to wear fake glasses. She, but she knows that's not her yeah. accent, and she knows that she made the, that she'll. That's why she's doing it because she was the one who put that idea in her head. So it was just like mm -hmm. more things than I thought all like clustered together. But at once. like it was, it was a big convergence of it was. It was really good. This episode was really tight. Yeah, like, it was. It was good. It was better than I was expecting for. Just like a slice of life episode that's just focusing on kids and not really on any of the older characters. Mm -hmm. And that also, on the most surface level of theme, has something that we've seen like tons of times, which is like, be yourself. Don't lie about who yeah, you are for others. I think this others. is actually like probably one of my the best favorite, episodes with this theme. Like, theme. This is, mm -hmm. yeah, this is my favorite episode for this theme that they've done so far. I, I really, really liked it. Um, there's something else I was going to say. I can't remember what it was. Oh, right. Um, the I thought Olivia, in like learning how to do a British accent, she was just gonna like try to remember what a British accent sounded like. I was like, just you about would to probably comment just on that see, in terms of like technology but, and how it's Yeah, but show. instead she's just listening to like tutorials on YouTube and yeah. like who hasn't done that? For at least one accent, if you're just like curious I don't think about I have. really, I've done that before because I've been recommended. I don't like, think I might have. I don't think I have. Like, oh, this is how, the, like, it sounds different when a Scottish person uh -huh. pronounces this vowel. Yeah. Compared to, I a think British it's a very interesting thing to learn about, like though, that. for certain. So, like, those videos are all over the internet, everywhere. And when I heard her actually practicing with one of those, I was like. This is super good and realistic, and this was is what would legitimately happen. Which makes if, sense, because like, that's how actors it. would be learning Yeah. it. I mean, at some point, they might unless have, like, a vocal coach help Unless them, you're but... Ben Diskin, then you just watch Kingdom Hearts videos until you learn. True. <laughs> I'm a paid actor, and I'm a, I, I love him. But YouTube is free. I, yeah, that's true. I, I, love, I love him so much. Um... So yeah, I am going to say that this is a 4.7 for me. I think I'm going to give this a 5 out of 5. I don't really have any complaints with it. I thought it was really good. I thought it was like really strong episode writing wise. I think it's probably my favorite Olivia episode. Like Olivia centric or Olivia containing? Olivia starring. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Now it's time for Christmas because it's November. It's Christmas. It's November. It's Christmas. So, um. I'm gonna try not to sneeze. Let's talk about the star. Part let's. one. Let's.
Um, so let's talk about that right now. So, episode 176, The Star, part one, written by Phil Waller and Paul McCusker. Victoria, what's your controversy? Tell me. I have a hot take on this episode, which I don't think you're going to like. Should we say what happens in it first? How in-depth is your yeah. hot take? N not that in-depth. Okay. I might like The Star more than I like Back to Bethlehem. No! I mean, I do like The Star, but not Back to Bethlehem like. It's always felt newer to me because I've heard it less. <laughs> And also, like, there's so many get, less, there's so no, many more like, characters and different character dynamics. There's, you know, there's, there's so many interesting, bases. there's so many interesting characters in this, and I really love all the characters. Not that I don't love, like, Judas and, not Judas, Judah, Judah and, like, all the characters from Back to Bethlehem. It's just, like, you also get to see how much Connie and Eugene have grown since Back to Bethlehem, and I really like that. And, yeah, they're, they're, um, they're basically tied for me, honestly. I think it's a good sequel. Also, I didn't know that, like, the, the wise men visited later until I listened to this episode for the first time. Okay, that's because you've been, like, real young, so, though. Yeah, but, like, it, it taught me new stuff that I didn't know. And I really like Proclus. Proclus, Proclus and Connie. Proclus is great. Proclus and Connie have such a sweet relationship because he's like the dad she never had. This is uh, this is it. Kenneth Mars' first episode pr mm -hmm. playing Proclus here. Kenneth Mars, who would later go on to play a bunch of people, mostly Mr. Holstein. Huh. Yeah. This is his first episode. Um, what happens in here, Victoria? Are you upset? No, no. I mean, I... I I respectfully disagree. I understand your opinion. I thought you were going to say something that was like really negative about the episode oh, because I no. thought you were going to be your hot take. No. But it was the opposite of that. It was the opposite. So I'm fine was, with that. It was complimenting it. it well, you were very much so. What happens in part one? Devin's upset. <laughs> um, I'm not. So in this episode, uh, Eugene and Connie go back into the Imagination Station and yeah. they go to the time like a couple days after where they were with Back to Bethlehem. And they revisit some of the characters who they met in Back to Bethlehem. Some of them, like Judah, aren't in it because they're gone or they couldn't get the actors. I don't really know. Um, I kind of wish Judah was in it. I, every time I listen to this, I'm like, I miss Judah. Yeah, I'm like, I know. Judah is terrible. I love He's him. He's such a good character. He's so great. He sucks. I love him so much. Uh-huh. I Go hate on. him. Um, so, um, Connie and Eugene are separated immediately. Um, Eugene ends up with the wise men, and they're trying to find Jesus. So he's trying to, like, guide them towards where Jesus is, but they don't want to listen to him because, of course, they go to the wrong place first before they end up going to find Jesus. Um, and then Connie is trying to look for Jesus, too, because she figures that's where... Eugene will be and they're going to be able to meet at the same place. She runs into a soldier named Proclus and he starts taking her there and then she meets um Benjamin. Yeah Benjamin. I was gonna say who did you play? Uh Benjamin? I d did not. Well in the Christmas musical one. I don't think I've ever played the innkeeper. No know. not not Benjamin the the guy who. Simeon. Simeon. That doesn't played... happen yet yeah, in part one. But they, they check the stable, and it's not the stable, so then they start heading towards uh, Jerusalem. Is it Jerusalem? Yes. Yeah. And then they That is where into... the temple is, and the temple is where you get circumcised. Yeah, and they run into Simeon, and then they talk to him. Not yet. Nope. And nope. They run into Herod first. Yes. Who is there, uh -huh. and Connie gets the heebie-jeebies, because... Mm -hmm. As every single male, except for Proclus and Eugene, do, basically, almost almost all of them. Um, 
he sees Connie and he's just like, dang, break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. I think so. Heck yes. Mm. And then, uh, and then he's just like, Proclus, can I buy that woman off of you? And Proclus is like, I think not, sir. Good day. And then. So I also remember that Connie's like 16 yeah, or 17 yeah, at the time. Yeah. Herod's probably like 40. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and so. Then they go, and they run into Simeon, and they run into Mary and Joseph and Jesus, and then Herod goes back, and he sees them, and then they hear, like, them speaking blasphemy about Jesus, and then Herod starts picking up Jesus, and Jesus is like, I don't like being held by this man, and he starts crying, and the episode ends. Yes. So... Um, this is a rare instance where we get to hear admittance of, like, that much time passing across two albums that mm -hmm. have gone since the last episode. It's interesting because it should be, like, a full year has passed, right? Because you've gone from last Christmas to this Christmas. It's been one year in real life. Connie, when she's, like, saying she hasn't seen Judah in forever, she says years, if you want to get technical. Years with an S on the end, which I've always found confusing, personally. Yeah. I assume she means, like, a year. It's been a year. Um, this is also, as far as I can remember, and this is kind of the crazy thing about this episode, the only Imagination Station adventure with any sort of actual continuation where, like, Wit let his specific characters not only recur in another adventure, but retain their memories of the users. Like, they, like, remember Connie and Eugene, which One is a pretty thing cool idea. I want to say, before I forget, uh, -huh. uh, the thing that's always bothered me the most about this episode is that they didn't have the same voice actors from Mary. I've always been bothered by that fact because everyone else is the same well if there's anything we know about adventures and odyssey it's that they cannot stick to the same voice actress when it comes to voicing mary's because yeah. mary barkley had four voices which i never even realized until i was older <laughs> Did I? I feel kind of bad so about do that. i because it's the barkley's yeah like, yeah George also has a different voice in Family Vacation. He wasn't Chuck Bolte until the second episode. Um, Which isn't one of those things you notice until you go back when you're older. Yeah, because we were just so used to Family Vacation that we didn't notice it wasn't Chuck Bolte. I like how... I like how when Connie tells Proclus that three of the people for whom she searches knows where they are, but the other may not... It means that she has more faith that an eight-day-old baby Jesus knows better where he is than Eugene will. <laughs> what do you Which mean? Which is pretty funny. Wouldn't she be talking about Mary and Joseph and And Jesus. She's Eugene? like, he's like, do they know where they are? And she said, three of them do, but one of them may Wouldn't not. Wouldn't she be talking about Joseph and Mary no, and Eugene? No, because, no, because he's like, what do you mean? And she's like, forget about those three. Let's talk about Eugene, oh, okay. basically. Because that's what I thought, too. I was like, maybe she means Eugene, but she makes it clear, like, no. She means she thinks Jesus knows better where he is at the age of one week and one day than Eugene I mean, will be able to ascertain. She's, uh, she's right, though. I know, but it's still funny. Um, Benjamin shows up when they go to the inn. I love Benjamin inn. so much. I love him so much. I'm He's so sad. He's like, you need to leave right now. You need to get out of here. Get out. Go <laughs> I Go was ahead. so glad when Rebecca! He Rebecca! <laughs> um, he's, he's great. He's so funny, and I'm so sad that he can only reference Judah, that they couldn't get Judah back from that, but even yeah. the fact he's like, get your zealot mule took us, get out of here, take, I don't want Judah back here, you do not bring him, I do not want to interact with his stupid you face sound like anymore. Your accent turned into Shrek. I don't think it was like, Shrek. If anything, it, it veered into Slavic. But that is a variation on Hebrew a lot of times. Shrek? Is. No, like Slavic. Oh. The Cyrillic alphabet is derived from the Hot Hebrew take. alphabet. Shrek is Jewish. Well, actually, it's derived from the Greek alphabet, which I believe is derived from the Hebrew what alphabet. What do you think of my head canon? I don't think that's correct. He's pretty Scottish. That's true. Um, yeah. And then we cut to Eugene. He's with the wise men. He He's like... 
they call people have called me Eugenius, which is not technically incorrect. It's it's not incorrect. That's no. what he was called last time. It I is. also like the continuity between that. Yes. There's a lot of good continuity. I never really these episodes. the only bad continuity is the lack of Mary's uh -huh. voice actress. I never realized before that the only wise man who dislikes Eugene is the one who's voiced by Dave Madden. I so. never noticed that. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's funny. It is funny. Um I was really annoyed with Eugene, and, like, he, he endears himself so easily, so quickly cool, to the wise men by just, he, like, he talking about job. the constellations He's and stuff. He's just like, hey, stars are pretty cool, and they're just like, they are cool! <laughs> Same hat! Yeah. So, yeah, it's, they it's, become, like, instant best friends. It's that easy for him, but then, conversely, they're like, we will go find the baby in Jerusalem. We need to fix the and baby. <laughs> Baby needs snack, and then bring <laughs> gold frankincense somewhere. <laughs> oh, I love, I love like the part where Eugene's just like, oh hey, that part where um like I was in pain, and then you give me a thing. What was in it? And they're like myrrh, and he's like myrrh. Also, I I like I love when it first cuts to Eugene. Connie's like Eugene doesn't know what he's doing. It hard cuts to Eugene. He's like I'm so thirsty. And he's like dying uh... in the desert. He's like the only thing I'm not. Like, the only thing that I need other than water is food, and I'm real hungry for a nice big, big plate, plate of, of water. Um, I love I'm Eugene. Mood, I get it. I, I love him. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm annoyed by, like, Eugene was able to be like, stars, hey, so quickly, and it worked, but then when he's like, no, Jesus is in Bethlehem, and they're like, how do you know? And he's like, because I saw him there, which is the most convincing and also correct and true answer. And yeah, then they're like, I don't know why he didn't say that. And he did say that. He's like, yeah. I saw him there. And they're like, how? And he's like, uh, you just gotta believe. I can't. Me. I can't tell you. I'm like, why not? I don't know. Just say that you were in Bethlehem and that you came from Bethlehem and you saw him there. Why couldn't you just say that? I don't know. Part of me thinks that like, it's the, not. The program, it's not a hard. Yeah, but like. The program maybe I know, would I have know. had to play out that way anyway. I know, so. yes. They have to have a reason to go to Bethlehem, but it annoys me that there's no reason that he shouldn't have been able to convince them apart from... Or at least tried more than, like, I can't tell you. He's like, oh, I can't explain. We're in a computer program. I'm like, you don't have to explain it. Jesus wasn't born last night, and you're pretty close. You could literally say, like... Jesus wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> You didn't fall off the turnip truck yesterday. You can say, like, I was there at the birth, and then now I'm here. Let's go back to Bethlehem with me. I can injure I've already met Mary and Joseph. That's all true stuff. Like, yeah. why didn't you just say that? Besides the fact that, yes, obviously they do have to go to Jerusalem and meet Herod and blah, 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 blah. Um, Eugene is socially awkward. How about that? Mm -hmm. he's, he's like a Duck Newton level liar. Is the thing uh, you just can't. Uh, uh, <laughs> I've never seen this man. I have seen this man. <laughs> uh, I don't know who Jesus is. I do know who Jesus <laughs> is. <laughs> I love Jesus very much. I love him and his terrible scythe like Bible that he wields. <laughs> um. So yeah, and then. Connie arrives there, she gets sent on by Herod, and then she runs into Mary and Joseph. And she's like, oh, so good to see you guys. I haven't seen you in a billion years. And like, it's been a week, but it is nice to see you, Connie. Um, and then Herod comes and starts being creepy again. That's what he does. Yeah. And yeah. then that's the end of part one. Okay, wouldn't Herod... I don't, I don't have all the material like... from the guide here, because we can't find our copy here. But fortunately, since this is a two-part review... We can say the stuff that's in the guide but, next time but like when the, we do part two. The age range uh -huh. for what Jesus would be at. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't Herod know that he was supposed to be dead? What do you mean? Like Jesus wasn't. So like all the babies were killed. But not yet. Dead. Oh, that hasn't happened. That's the end of the. <laughs> Remember, Victoria? The wise men have to like talk to Herod first and all that. No. <laughs> yeah. It's remember the been wise a while men? Since I listened to this, or like yeah, remember how happen. the Christmas story happens that in the Bible? In this episode, yeah, but like that. The wise men have to meet Herod and then not go back to him before he's like kill all the babies. Okay. 
That hasn't happened yet in this episode. So. No, but clearly it hasn't happened yet at all because the wise men haven't gotten there yet. They have to have yep. them before Harry can kill the babies. Yep. They do mess with the timeline a little bit because, like, pe most people think, like, Jesus was around two years old when Herod does all this stuff, so it wasn't, like, right when he got circumcised, and obviously he was circumcised on the eighth day because that's how that works. Um, Why? Because that's in Mosaic Law. Why? You always circumcise on the eighth day. Why the eighth day? I mean, day? I could go into my, my very old, possibly outdated knowledge of understanding is because you have, when you were born, you have at first a severe vitamin K deficiency for a short while. So you're really prone to like bleeding excessively for the first week after you're born. On the eighth day, your body goes through like a huge surge in vitamin K and then it like equilibrates to normal levels after that. Um, and vitamin K is one of the key coenzyme factors in the blood coagulation cascade. So and so the safest day to get a cut, basically, basically the day. safest day in your life to get a cut is on the eighth day after you're born. Okay. Yes. Which, so obviously getting cut before then is basically the most dangerous time to get cut. And most babies who are still circumcised if, nowadays, if you're not Jewish, if you're American, you're getting circumcised like on the day that you're born, which is very dangerous and which is why some babies do die from circumcision. Oh, that's if you sad. do it properly, the Jewish way, and you do it on the eighth day, you should be fine. Um, what, what about... To my awareness, this may be outdated knowledge, it's been a long time since I read about this, so... What about, um... I can't remember. Never mind. So, um, there is a goof alert, I'm pretty sure this is in the guide, and I don't have the exact wording of it here, I just transcribed the way that it's worded on AI Wiki. Maybe it's the same wording that's in the guide, I can't remember. But I do remember that I'm pretty sure this is in the guide. Oh, oh, would it be different for preemies? Hmm, interesting question. It may be. Maybe, maybe not. I have no idea. Okay. That's, that is an excellent question, Victoria. It very well could be, but there's a chance it might not be. What about late births? Same, same answer, I guess. For eight days or for preemies? Same answer, like, for preemies, like, it very well could be different. There's a chance it could not be. I don't know. Assuming that my knowledge is correct about that, that, like, vitamin K flux after you're born, I don't know if that's part of the cycle tied to when you're conceived or if it's tied to when you come out of the womb. Okay. I'm going to guess when you come out of the womb, since it's such a tight regulation cycle, and even normal births have a variance of about a week. And so I'm going to guess it should probably be the same if you're regardless of born premature or late. So, Goofler, Proclus says the temple is nothing compared to the Colosseum in Rome. This story is taking place sometime between 4 BC and 2 BC, or thereabout, during the reign of Caesar Augustus, whose reign was from 27 BC to 14 AD, but the Colosseum was not even ordered to be built until the reign of Vespasian, whose reign was from 69 to 79 AD. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, the Colosseum so... was, like, about a hundred years away from existing at this point. So, when he's like, oh, this is nothing compared to the Colosseum, and it's, it's, nothing, yeah. it's nothing because it doesn't exist yet. Yes. So, um, he, he's telling the truth. Well, kind of backwards. That's not how Back, I would word backwards it. Backwards truth. Yeah. Or, it's because this isn't actually happening in history, this is just how Wit programmed it, Wit did goof bad. Because this is before yeah, the Imagination always... Station had built in the ways to automatically... See, that's what I do when I'm writing. I make it so the character doesn't know. So that you if can make I it don't... like an unreliable yeah. narrator So, thing. like, if I don't know, the character doesn't know. Yeah. So You're relying on an unreliable not, narrator. You don't have to worry about being an unreliable author. Yeah. <laughs> Good writing technique. Thank you. So what doesn't know is history is what, yes. what I'm saying, basically. Mm-hmm. So, that's the star part one. I really like it. Uh, obviously, we haven't even met Simeon yet. Proclus already is, like, great. We, Proclus we kinda get is him... so good. He's underrated. Yes. Because he's only in two episodes, but he's really good. He is, like, this amazing father figure with this sad backstory. Even though he's Roman, he shows, you know, this, this maturity when Connie, you know, is kind of rude to him. And he's like, you know, just because... 
He also this saves is, Connie's life. The station into which I was born, like, you know, that doesn't mean I'm on top of everything, like, super good. That, doesn't he, like, save her from getting hit by a car? Right at the beginning, yeah. Yeah. Um, that Rome is doing and stuff like that, and then obviously stuff in part two goes on to happen, and he's super legit. The wise men are great. I like the fact that they actually gave distinctly different personalities to uh, Melchior, Gaspar, and Balthazar. I think this iteration of the wise men and also the one from... From the movie, the from Nativity the or whatever. the Nativity yeah. are the best ones because they have so much personality uh -huh. and they're just really fun. Yeah. Yeah. If a character can make me laugh, I'm instantly more endeared to them. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff so far. We'll talk about the whole thing when we get to part two. Uh, maybe not two episodes from now because soon we'll be reviewing album 66, which is already out on AI or uh, AIOC. So you know, get listening to that. I also remembered Victoria. I was clearing out our news thing from before, and I saw the message I have from Forever Go of what the perspective titles would be for this episode, and the ones I got from Forever Go were correct, except that um, Much Ado About Jealousy was originally called Pangs of Jewels the Sea. Pangs oh. of Jewels, the, Jewels the Sea. Remember how I said Much Ado About Jealousy yeah. was a bad name? Uh -huh. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that name changed, but at the least, rest of the ones are all the, the same. That name is pronounceable. Yes. I mean, when I read it in my head, I was like, okay, I like the new title more, and now that I say it out loud to you, I can't even get the letters yeah. out. Jewels. I guess Jewel it was just Jewelacy. There's no Jewel S on it. Pangs of Jewelacy is what it was called. But I put the S in there to help you understand it better because yeah. it made it much more comprehensible when I said it like that, you know? <laughs> um, so that's what we're doing. But that's not what we're doing next time, Victoria. What are we doing next episode? We're, do Best we're counting down. Top 10 uh -huh. families yes. ever yes. in the world. Yes. Of Odyssey. Yes. And real life. Uh-huh. Number one, us. us. <laughs> yeah. Ow. Sorry. You hit so hard. So, well, I, I hit your ring. Yeah. No, you hit my hand. Well, I, it felt like you hit your ring into the like, I, I might have, the, like, but I didn't feel anything from tarsal, my ring. It's too big. Leg. My hand stings. <laughs> I just miles it. Ah, uh, my hands. <laughs> These hands. My hand is broken. Um. So yeah, we're talking about top ten families. Countdown on Avengers and Odyssey. That's what we're doing next time. Yeah, Until then, thank you for joining us on our side of the YouTube. I've been Devin Francis. I'm the Limerick Snare. I'm Jules. I'm Jules. I'm Jules. And you've been watching the Adventures and Odyssey Oddcast.